Imagine teaching a toddler calculus by showing them the answer key, but still making them earn every single step. Sounds impossible, right? Well, Google just did exactly that with AI. And honestly, it's kind of terrifying how well it worked. This week, Google didn't just release another chatbot. They fundamentally broke the rules of how AI learns. Their researchers took two training methods that were never supposed to mix, like oil and water, and created a system that makes tiny AI models think like giants. But that's not even the scary part. While one team was teaching baby AIs to reason, another built an AI scientist that casually solved a biological mystery that stumped humans for a decade, in just days. Buckle up, because we're diving into the week Google's AI went from pretty smart to uncomfortably intelligent. Let's start with the training breakthrough. It's called Supervised Reinforcement Learning, or SRL. The name itself is an oxymoron, like jumbo shrimp. Here's why. Normally, AI learns in one of two ways. There's supervised learning, where the AI basically copies homework. It sees the right answers and memorizes them. It's learning to paint by tracing, not actually understanding art. Then there's reinforcement learning. That's like throwing a kid in a maze with no map and saying, figure it out. I'll give you candy when you're right. The AI tries random stuff, fails a lot, and slowly learns what works. Google's genius move was to combine them. They give the AI the final answer, but make it earn rewards for every single step it takes to get there. It's like showing a student the final solution to a math problem but forcing them to prove they understand each line of the proof. You'd think this would create confusion, but instead, it created brilliance. Here's the problem it solved. Small AI models, the ones with about 7 billion parameters, completely collapse on hard problems, give them challenging math, and they just hallucinate answers. Traditional training makes them copy surface patterns without understanding the logic underneath. It's like memorizing Shakespeare without understanding English. In tests, one model's performance on difficult math actually got worse after training. Imagine studying for an exam and knowing less afterward. So with SRL, they break an expert solution into tiny steps. For each step, the AI generates its hidden reasoning, its private scratch pad. Then it takes an action. That action is instantly compared to the teacher's solution and it gets immediate feedback, a reward or a penalty. The feedback is constant. Every single move tells the AI if it's on the right track. It learns which decisions matter without copying exact words. It's learning the why, not just the what. The results were absolutely bonkers. On tough math problems, a baseline model scored a miserable 6.7%. After SRL training, that jumped to 13.3%. On coding tasks, the base model got 5.8% correct. After SRL, 14.8%, nearly triple. This tiny model now solves problems that previously required massive AI systems, and it does it with stunning efficiency. But as I said, that wasn't even the scariest part. While that was happening, another Google team unleashed an AI co-scientist on a decade-old medical mystery. For years, researchers at Imperial College London were trying to figure out how antibiotic-resistant superbugs get so powerful. After a decade of work, they had a theory. They fed the problem to the AI. In 48 hours, it came up with the exact same hypothesis. It independently validated 10 years of human work in two days. Then it went further, proposing four new theories the scientists hadn't even considered, one of which they're now actively investigating. So in one week, Google changed both how AI thinks and what it can think about. For years, the AI arms race was about being bigger. More data, more power, more money. This new SRL method proves that intelligence can come from elegance, not just brute force. It means anyone, from a startup to a student, could potentially train a deeply reasoning AI. And the co-scientist proves what that reasoning can do accelerate human discovery at a pace we can barely comprehend. We've been watching AI get better at playing games and writing emails, but this week it felt like it started playing a different game entirely. All right, let's get into the second major story today, the AI scientist. Now, while one team was teaching small models how to think, DeepMind, 
they went full mad scientist. They built an AI that actually does science. I'm talking publishing papers, solving mysteries that have stumped researchers for a decade, discovering life-saving drugs, actual science. They call it the AI co-scientist, and it's built on the back of Gemini 2.0. But get this, it's not one single AI. It's a team, a committee of AI agents, where each one has a specific scientific role to play. There's a generation agent. Its job is to brainstorm wild new ideas. Then a reflection agent comes in and tries to poke holes in those ideas, like a skeptical peer reviewer. A ranking agent forces the best hypotheses to compete in a tournament of ideas. An evolution agent takes the winning concepts and merges them into something even stronger. And finally, a meta review agent looks at the entire process and figures out how to make it better next time. The humans, they set the goals and provide a little guidance, but the AI, the AI does the heavy lifting, the reasoning. So, does it work? Let's look at the breakthroughs. First experiment, find new drugs for liver fibrosis. This is a deadly disease, a scarring of the liver that humans have struggled to treat for decades. The researchers gave the AI one simple prompt, and then they stepped back. The system processed thousands upon thousands of research papers and came back with three specific drug candidates. And not just the drugs, it told them exactly how to test them. So, the researchers did, using miniature lab-grown human livers. The results were stunning. Two of the drug classes worked beautifully. One drug in particular, called Voronostat, which is already FDA-approved for cancer, it didn't just stop the scarring it actually boosted the growth of healthy liver tissue. The lead researcher, Gary Peltz from Stanford, was floored. There are over 180,000 scientific papers on liver fibrosis. Out of all of them, only seven even mentioned Vornistat, and most of those were totally irrelevant. The AI found the hidden connection almost instantly. For comparison, Peltz also tested two drug targets that he and his human team had selected, targets with way more literature supporting them. Neither one worked. The AI's picks won, hands down. Second experiment, a biological mystery a decade in the making. For 10 years, researchers had been painstakingly figuring out how certain genetic elements hijack viruses to spread between different species, a process they called tail piracy. They took all the data they had before they made their discovery, fed it to the AI, and asked it the same question they started with 10 years prior. The AI came back with five hypotheses. Its top one? It was exactly the tail piracy mechanism. The same conclusion humans took 10 years to reach. The AI got there in a few dates. So we have to talk about the uncomfortable truth here. An AI just did in days when it took a team of human PhDs a decade to accomplish. That's not just impressive, it's existentially unnerving. We are not talking about an AI winning a board game or generating a pretty picture. We are talking about scientific discovery, the one domain we always thought required that spark of human creativity, that gut intuition, those years of hard-won expertise. But here's the crucial nuance that almost everyone misses. The AI didn't replace the scientists, it amplified them. Gary Peltz and his team still had to design the real-world experiments, they had to validate the results, and they were the ones who understood the profound implications of what they found. The AI was a turbocharged research assistant, one that could read 180,000 papers in the time it takes to drink a coffee, and spot patterns a human brain would never see. It's like giving a scientist a telescope that doesn't see stars, but sees invisible connections between ideas. The question isn't whether AI will replace scientists, the real question is whether scientists who use AI will replace scientists who don't. And that future is already here. Pelsa's lab is using the system right now for drug repurposing and genetic discovery. So that's where we are. We have AIs that can reason like giants, and we have an AI scientist solving mysteries faster than we can. Peltz believes systems like this are on the verge of shaping real patient care. But if an AI can solve a decade-old mystery in a matter of days, how long until it starts making discoveries that we, its creators, don't even fully understand? Are we watching the birth of true artificial intelligence? Or is this just the world's most impressive pattern-matching machine? Let me know what you think.